Okay. So as you can see, we have completed the rough end installation of the base. And I still gotta sand and paint and put the two screws in on the feet here that screw into the bottom of the ship. Right now it's just sitting in the cradle. But the hard work of getting these cut to fit I might do a little wood filler. I don't know if I should do that or and then you know that's going to be based on the color I picked to paint all that the base. So the rough end part though all the cuts and I got little teeny screws about an inch long, inch and a quarter long that I got a real small head in the, these top sections and the bottom sections are screwed down to the baseboard. Let's see we got a screw there and there pre-drilled so it doesn't split you know the screw hole where the thread screw into the wood is pre-drilled with a smaller drill bit so it doesn't split the wood especially on these ends here even though it's a hardwood I think it's oak it would still split if you don't pre-drill and recess the you know pre-drilled for the holes going in and for the through, a little short spot for the through of the screw so it pulls tight without screwing into this. And then another third larger drill bit to get the head recessed into that little groove. So it's not so noticeable. So I do believe came out pretty good I like the way it looks it sort of matches we got some if you look down in there on that deck down in there you can see those little columns holding up the grid those sort of match these columns and then there's more here in the back there's little columns for that railing. So I think the column idea with this <clears throat> leftover, I used to have this uh, another house on top of the cabinets and I had some lighting behind it that shined up on the ceiling. It was a nice accent for the cabinets. And uh, when we left there and moved to where we're at now, I took all that with me. Just left the cabinets like they would be when they're installed by the cabinet installer. So, But uh, the damage from when we tipped this thing over, I do have one thing there I got to glue on goes up in there <clears throat> I was throwing I was throwing some stuff up top and I had the front of the ship sticking out here a little bit too much and after I threw it brought my arm down I accidentally hit this front mask and as, as I hit it I saw it start to fall over because it wasn't screwed into the base the base was just sitting there on top of the board so the whole thing started to fall over. So I grabbed it and it sort of clunked against the table here. But in the process, a few ropes broke and the top part of this front mast broke. 
broke off just a little deep down in that block. So I added another block in front of it and put the Gorilla wood glue in there. And that fit back in there nicely. So other than a couple repairs, I had to repair this line and a couple lines over here. Other than that, it wasn't too bad. But <clears throat> before I actually screw this ship to the base through them holes there, I want to uh, finish that base and then we'll run the screws up in there. I've got a nice little handy dandy device here you put on the drill and it allows you to screw at a 90 degree angle we can get a screw up in there that will hold that ship tight to the base and then we'll attach that I might drill and screw it on there with some little micro screws and then this book that came with the ship is our only verbal instructions during the steps and the plans you saw the the plans in that other book the other book just has pictures really it doesn't have any um, verbal information so this is in different languages and for like that step 12 there glue the planks number 34 you got to find that on the print it tells you in the back of the other book what sizes those pieces are after the bulkhead and as it is in the previous step cut off the excess in sand and that would probably be repeated 50 times or 20 times or something like that. But the instructions were really hard to decipher. And we made it though. So I think I'm going to take this page and cut it in half. Um, laminate cut it in half I can get one there and one here that would be a nice aspect to the ship so you can read about the specs you know it's got oh it tells us there the the officers and the midshipmen we got all those guys probably a few more than what's in <laughs> And then the cannons. So there's some good information here that will. This is a good example of one of those ships at sea. Hmm. 492 able seamen. Can you imagine 400 people living on that for months at a time? Wow. That's really hard to believe, isn't it? I, I'm sure that's probably including everybody. But it may be just the seamen and then the officers and all are in addition to that. So. so another milestone in the completion of this model. We will... Uh, Finish out those details on the base and then attach it. And then the last step will be up here. I got some black sand or plexiglass. There's two big sheets of it. And it looks frosted now, but it's got a plastic coat on the outside you peel off. So I'll have to probably go buy some cherry wood or 
I don't think I got anything here that I can use to make the frame out of for that glass. It's not real glass, you know, it's plexiglass or Lexan. And then uh, hopefully we got enough to build an enclosure for this because it's pretty big. Now it's a good idea to do a reference here, eh? So to the front, the mast and the back of the flag or the bow stem are about 40 inches. Counting the flag is 42. Forty-two by almost thirty-six, thirty-five, and at least fifteen. So, pretty good size case we got to make for it. And I'm going to try to use a wood frame around the corners and the edges and we'll have a, a bigger solid base inside the case that this will set in and probably screw down to. So that'll be encapsulated in the case. That's another option because this case is going to be so big I might be able to put this sheet outside of that base because the case is going to be way out here I'll have plenty of room inside on that floor of it to mount this history page and maybe I'll include some of the photographs that are in the plans here We'll have to see about what we can salvage out of these plans to to do that with. But <clears throat> there she blows. Okay, another step in progress on the base. We got that. piece of three-quarter inch plywood here and we cut a little router groove in there to accept the edge of the Lexan and we got all the pieces of Lexan cut except for the top uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet because I have two pieces of scrap here we are that I may piece together for the top because I've got a hinge that I'm thinking about using so I have access to it but I'll worry about that once I get the the main part of the box built so what I did was get a piece of uh, three-quarter inch birch plywood which is already finished on one side or sanded on one side it's in really good shape nice thick piece of plywood and I took the router this uh, groove cutting bit and ran the router sideways around there and cut that groove and then I tacked on this rope bead with some glue and tacks about every eight inches or so. Put a tack in there and uh, took some wood filler on the corners to finish off the corners. They don't quite match up with this rope bead, but uh, a little bit of wood filler will make it look like it's continuing around and that gives it a nice nautical effect 
with that rope bead on there you can see one spot here I went a little too far I'll fill that in with some wood wood filler but uh, this is just sitting in there right now adjusting for dimensions because the ship is gonna just fit in this box you know, the glass will be right close to touching the flag and be a half an inch or an inch away from the bow stem here and then the same on the sides I got an inch or so three quarters of an inch clearance on the sides from this main mast yard arm so the plan now is I still got to get some hardwood <clears throat> quarter round <clears throat> so I want to use this on the outside this is an outside quarter corner I'm going to use this on the outside of the glass the black sand or plexiglass and let this uh, cover the seams where the corners of the glass meet each other. So that'll be on the four verticals and then across the top on both sides and across the ends, the miter, the corners and everything. But I can't just depend on this for structure. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm thinking about trapping <clears throat> You can imagine this is two two corners or one corner but two pieces coming together and making a corner and that stuff on the outside I'm gonna put a piece of hardwood <coughs> um, regular corner round on the inside and glue and screw so that'll give some stability to the vertical arms and the horizontal runs this is an example of a, what I would use on the inside but this is not the piece I want to use something that's hardwood <clears throat> and a little bigger in dimensions so it comes out to match the edges and trap the glass in between those and make it out this is a PVC I want to make it out of hardwood so that would be on the inside and the other stuff on the outside and the hardwood I can stain to match <clears throat> to match that and that will give us some stability for the corners and the edges you know because we got a piece up here and then we got a long one across the top up here and down and around so it's going to be a complete box just won't have anything on the bottom except this so that's the progress i made yesterday was putting this together routering it sanding and taking a little chisel and cutting out and then fitting the glass in there make sure that's going to work so that'll go down in the groove like that with enough room for the other corner to come overlap it and uh, this glass has got a you can see down there it's got a peel stuff on both sides of it so hopefully it won't be too scratched up once I peel that off but uh, in order to get these corners cleaned out you can imagine that router bit made a curve 
up toward the surface when I stopped so I had to get the corners cleaned out so I could let that glass go down in there all the way so I manufactured a little tool I just took a regular screwdriver and ground the tip of it so it's like a miniature chisel and then bent it in the vise so it went the angle I want to get that chipped out of there and then use this to cut the edges into the corners and tap on it with a hammer and then go in there with this and chip it out until we get that corner the same as the groove is. So that took a little time and then cutting this in the miter box to uh, do like a picture frame around the edge and getting that glued and tacked on there took a little time but it made the base look really nice I think that that will be a good feature for the base so I'm gonna finish assembling and um, trying to get the glass ready to set and uh, then I'll get back with you guys and show you the progress I've made on that okay here we got a another little update get the first piece of trim mitered for the top corner and the pieces of Lexan plexiglass stuck in the spot where they're going to be at and as you can see this display case is rather large but that's how big it's got to be to fit the, the ship so I just got this temporarily set in place with the tape holding the edges so we can miter all these corners and get uh, the cuts right. Using that little cheap miter saw works pretty good for stuff like this. Just got to make sure my 45s line up. So that's the progress so far. I'm going to keep cutting away. Get back with you in a little bit. Okay, today we're working on a couple of different things. First off, we uh, installed the remaining rope trim we had left over from the base on this stanchion for the ship. I think that adds a nice, nice feature to the framework around that. We got all the wood putty roughly installed so we'll be sanding and painting but it looks pretty good in there I don't have it set in there now because I don't have enough room up top and it's really going to be in the in the case so the progress on the case we bought three sticks of hardwood corner round and I'm using the coping saw to shape the ends so they'll fit up in here. You can see the, the two verticals on that end and then this will nicely fit up in there. on the 
like the long sides and I'm working on installing the piece that'll go from these corners over on this short side and uh, that coping is a little more tedious than the long ones because I'm intersecting two two boards instead of just one well, actually three come together in one spot in those corners so this little profile you see on the end there will fit up in here I got to get a measurement for the length and then do the same little coping on the end after I cut it to length and then repeat that for down here so once that's done <clears throat> then we'll be able to start gluing and screwing this together minus the top I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do up there the two pieces of glass a scrap left over aren't long enough I might have some other stuff up here I gotta look and see but I'm thinking about using a hinge that's a piece of stainless steel piano hinge I've got a bunch of this stuff that's aluminum and I might lid make a lid for the top <clears throat> to give me access this uh, glass in the framework is just sitting in that groove that we routed in there and I think that might be an access way too so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do the top and then I'll decide whether or not I'm gonna hinge it and then if not then we'll be able to access it just by lifting the whole glass out of that groove but I don't know if that's gonna be something that'd be easy to do or not just for the sake of getting access to the ship so my other case is for the Cuddy Sark is totally sealed <laughs> and there's no way to get in there without taking the whole thing and turning it upside down and uh, taking the bottom off of it from underneath and that is sort of a hairy prospect when you turn your ship upside down but that's how it got installed so this one I hope I think I'm gonna do a little different but progress is continuing and I think this is gonna look really good once I paint and stain or whatever we're gonna do with this the wood and the base pieces here might use that gold leaf paint all this with the gold leaf and then do the a dark brown or something on this frame and try to match that over here but we'll see once we get there so that's the progress so far a big empty box this is like uh, 43 44 inches long and 18 inches wide 36 inches tall so <clears throat> that's the marking of the profile I got to cut you can see there's one that's cut with the coping saw So this one is cut to fit on this end and it fits up in there good. 
and get up here. You can see that nice fit. Does the same on the other side. I check this on the other end and needs to be about an eighth of an inch longer than this one. So once I get done with this cut here, and I'll do the same on the other end, but make it a little longer. And we should have a good fit. Okay. So, <clears throat> you see that before we had the corner bead on. And that's what the corner will look like. Minus the staining and all down there. But we've got all four of the pieces of hardwood screwed to the glass on three different places. I'm going to add two more here and two more here on each one to stiffen it up even more. But in the process of completing that, I've had to remove the uh, protective coating that plastic that's on there on both sides so once that uh, is finished the uh, rest of the screws then we'll remove these to stain them because I've already had to cut them down an eighth of an inch to account for the top piece of glass and the way these corners rise up so there'll be enough room for the thickness of the top piece of glass to set on there and I'll fine tune those before I do the staining but uh, that's a big step in the process before it was just taped together for all the cutting of the glass and the fitting into the board but now We've got the hardwood screwed to the glass and all four corners. Of course, I got four more pieces of hardwood that'll be up here in the same fashion as these that'll have to get screwed on. But the uh, hard part of holding it together as one piece is done. So we'll just keep screwing away until we get the rest of it ready and then we'll stain it. And put it back together one piece at a time so good progress today that uh, good sense of accomplishment and I was using jigs like this to set inside there and push against the piece of wood on both sides so when I'm drilling and screwing I'm making sure that thing doesn't move I gotta get the phone.